You're listening to The Last Man In Podcast. Covering Winnipeg hockey and the NHL. Shifley dances his way in. Shifley scores! <laughs> Last Man In, episode number 133. The Centennial the... Michael Hutchinson of the Moose. No. Yeah. He, just did, he never wore 33. He, he never. He also never played for the Moose. Pull up a googie. Pull up the gooks. I'm not pulling he, up the hey, gooks. I'll hey, I'll goog it. He never played for the Moose or the Ice Caps. H- Michael Hutchinson? I don't think he did. He played for the Ice Caps. Did he? Yeah. The first year. But That's he, my guess. He never played for the Moose, though. Well, wh- Moose He played... He was... Ice caps until one th- when we had Chris Mason, and then he came onto the team after that. Anyways, what are we going to talk about this week? So, lots to talk about. Nothing really happened with the Jets at all. No. Uh, they played the Stars earlier in the week. We'll talk about what happened there. They played the Penguins. That happened. There was another thing that happened that game. They played the Habs, who had a new coach behind the bench. And then they played the Sens, where everything happened. And then we'll just touch on... Uh, the a potential goal of the year candidate from Matthews. Oh, yeah. Rookie of the year. You mean Drew N, right? Uh, oh, I didn't oh, see that, that one. That was so nice, too. I didn't see that one. Ugh. Uh, the Bruins' recent hot streak. Okay. Patrick Kane's milestone that he hit. Oh, jeez. Yamri Yager's milestone that he hit. There's a lot of milestones. Just say milestones. And Good. two interesting things. Okay. One's kind of just a funny story that happened, or okay. a funny thing that happened. Okay. The other one is a question for Cameron. Perfect. Ooh. And Luke. Yeah, good. Me and yeah. my buddy Luke, who is yes. not me. No, not you at all. Not me. No. Nope. Okay, so let's get let's get started. I saw a no. movie where a guy plays twenty three different people. So you you've got no. <laughs> you can't even. Pull oh, it you off. saw the movie Split as well. I did. Fantastic film. Guess, Great. Guess, guess what movie we watched this weekend? John Wick Chapter Two. Nice. Yeah. Far- Worth the watch. Worth the watch. The first watch. one was awesome. Fantastic. No spoils. No, no a couple okay. action scenes itself just make it the no opening. Spoils. The opening scene in the movie makes it worth it, and then there's one scene. No okay, spoils. Where he Enough. uses. You've yeah, you know what? I, 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 I don't care. I don't want to know. <laughs> so good. Shush. I know. The one thing I want to say is ruin the best scene of the movie. So I'm not saying it. Yep. Yeah. But okay. The um, the, the Have female you seen the parody actress trailer in it. Where, Woo. <sighs> Have you seen the parody trailer where someone kills John Wick and his dog goes and avenges it? Yes, that is so funny. <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll watch that later. So Jet Stars happened earlier this week. Yep. That was the the first game. Wait, hold last on. Podcast. Are we going to catch up from last podcast? Yeah. No news Tuesdays. No news Tuesdays. Oh, we we'll do that in mailbag. No, no, we're going to we'll touch on it when, when they to... play the Habs. And what happened? Right, there? perfect. Because they yeah they had flow. a very interesting flow. week this week. Okay, there's yeah. no flow. There is no. There's flow. never flow. No. So they played the Stars. Okay. I believe they won this game. They did five to two. Because they, they had two empty net goals. Oh no! Oh no! We only know what that means. Two players scored these goals. Two players they? scored these okay. goals. However, okay. Patrick Laine returns to his form of Patrick Laine. Oh, does he? With an empty netter from the blue line. Which is his third on the year? Third. Yeah, Patrick. but he also had a beautiful game winning goal, so. What do you mean game winning goal? Like he has game? a game winning goal. He oh, just ripped the third it. of the He the got it off the face off. He brought it around the guy's stick and ripped it top corner so, in like half a second. So that was the third goal. That was so third good. goal. So, because of this, was that you? That was you telling me yesterday about Patrick Laine. This is his third hat trick. He's the first 18 year old ever to have three hat tricks. Ever. And this ever. is a weird Period. Stat. No one. No one. Go, oh, no, I believe it. No one. But, well, I've seen it. But. Um, he's the third rookie to have three hat tricks ever, too. He just should play if Dallas 82 times. If he season. scores two more, no, if he scores three more hat tricks before the age of 21, which I think he's going to. Yeah. Maybe by the end of this year. Why not? Anyways, um, they don't play he'll Dallas break. Anymore, so. Okay, well, he'll break. Uh, <laughs> he does he'll play break, Toronto though on Tuesday. Yeah. yeah, Gretzky. He'll break Gretzky's record of five hat tricks before the age of twenty-one. Which so that means he has three years to to get three. Essentially, hat-tricks. gets a hat trick a year. Yeah. Remember back when this I'm franchise didn't. Safe bet. Remember I'm, when this franchise didn't have a hat trick for three years? Oh, you and mean now, when they teased us? Yeah. Every time <laughs> I remember. If, Patrick, <laughs> if Patty Liney doesn't get three hat tricks in the next three years, I'll buy you guys pizza. <gasps> Whoa, that's pizza a bet. deal. Yeah. Can uh, I make mine a treatsa pizza? I'll buy you treatsa no. pizza. No. Yes! Yeah, okay. I would know one treatsa, you get the pizza. Okay. I like Hawaiian, so it'll work. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Whatever. Done. So now, I'm he finished this game with what, 27 goals? 20... Yes. No, 26. So, I, 
I was... 26. No, he was 27. Nope, 26. At the end of the game. Nope. Because he scored in Pittsburgh and he scored Saturday, too. Oh, that's right. He was 28? Yeah. No, yeah. he's at 28 now. So he was at 26 at the end of that game. Okay. So the funny thing was, is I was texting in front of the show, Matt Draper, during this game. Of course. And I was like, oh, Matthew scored a goal. He's like, oh, maybe someone should tell Line. And then Line got two goals. I'm like, oh, I guess someone told Line. And then Matthew scored another one. I'm like, well... Someone told Matthews that Line scored, and then Line scores the hat trick, which is just fucking stupid. But Why that's is it stupid. I don't think people realize the fact that he's 18 and he has three hat tricks in his first year. I don't the think Jets anyone realizes. The Jets franchise didn't have a hat trick for five years. He's making up for all he that. He has hurts. three. It's just, I, I've never, like, since Ovechkin, I don't think we've seen a player like this. And the fact that he's a Winnipeg Jet is, is nice for the city. It's nice and, to go to a game, and when Line steps on the ice. Once out of every three shifts, like, for sure, he's got a prime-time goal-scoring chance. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Except the game that my dad and I went to where my he all he wanted was a line-A goal. I'm, I don't think line-A got a shot on net that game against and his, Columbus. His game's rounding out, too. He's hitting people. He's making great passes. He's getting a lot of assists. He's making friends with Haps, which is fantastic. Radulov will get there. Oh, about. yeah. <laughs> I'd miss that. Okay. No, we'll tell you when he He just didn't there. have a very good concussion test, so he wanted to make sure he was okay. Yeah, yeah. Basically, what happened was line eight, like, you know, classic, like, E-line Two case. guys going full speed, turn around, and don't realize they're right there, and they just oh, smoke each other. Yeah, yeah and, like, they're both their visors are all, like, foggy, and then, like, after the shift, like, Radulov skates over. I, I, literally, I didn't see him. Sorry. And line is like, ah, it's fine. And they're both <laughs> laughing. <laughs> so it's okay. It was fun. For a moment, every Jets fan had a heart attack. Yeah. Because oh, he yeah. looked like he got cre- creamed. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Ugh. All right, so they won 5-2 at the Stars. Then they played the Pens, which was perfect setup, because who was due for his thousands career point? What did One I tell you? Point. Five minutes for the game started was going to happen. Yeah. What happened well, five no, minutes no, the you game? Knew, you knew hold a on. second. Crosby, hold on. They went on a two-game road trip. They played Coyotes and someone else. Crosby needed one point on that road trip, no, and he, he didn't get a he, point. He, he needed two in that road oh, trip. Oh, two he and got, got one. He got one. Okay, so what Crosby did is the L.A. Kings did. Oh, he yeah. tossed the game oh, to do knew. it at home. He yeah. knew. Clearly. No one goes pointless against the Coyotes when your name is Crosby or Mike. But if you're the Jets. Or Gino. Or, whoop, I mean, if you're the Jets, just let him get it, and then they'll like they'll take the chance that there's a big lull after that. But then That's forever the saying. Jets are going to be immortalized, regardless of how long this yep. team lasts here. They're immortalized. There are as two a team. great memories: Stamkos' sixtieth, yeah, and Crosby's one thousand. Yeah, there you go. And that we, friggin' Spezza goal of year one they show on TSN, like oh year, yeah, where they he goes where through he goes all down five everybody. guys. I'll never forget that night because Dan was at the game <laughs> back when Spezza and I was, was shoveling an like I, I was shoveling my driveway, and Dan texts me, he's like, "Are you watching the game?" And I'm like, "No." He's like, "Go watch the game." So I watched because I was recording it. And, like, I fast-forward to, like, well, I just keep going. And then I watch the Spezza, and I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> it's on every Spezza highlight package ever now. Dad, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. It was a great goal. I don't you know. okay? <laughs> <laughs> or if a player's ever getting traded or gets traded, two out of the ten highlights are going to be on Jets. That's just a conspiracy that TSN it is, has. It, it, it happens well, every you time. Well, know something weird? Uh, I was watching Sports Center last night, and they... Just fast forwarded to the game being three one Jets. They didn't show any of the Jets goal. No, sorry, it was two nothing, and then they showed the Ottawa's first goal. Then they didn't show the Jets third goal. Jets don't matter. They showed Ottawa's second goal, and then they showed all the stuff in between. Which Still we'll get better to. than ESPN in the states, where you go and watch it. It's like <laughs> Detroit won five to two. Here's Advocator's goal, and you're like, what? That's it. <laughs> No, so like, yeah, that's enough the for the Jets NHL news tonight. You're like, what? They they eventually changed it to show the I think the matter. first goal and that or to show Pearl's goal and that was it. I was watching I was watching before you guys came, I was watching Nats hockey and they had Dave Poulin and Darren Drager on. Yep. And they're raving about how Liney he's been re- leading basically leading every category for rookies all year, and they're like, Oh, Matthews has been the front runner all year though. But Liney's making it pretty tough. You think? He's as he's, he's but we all know, doing like, better. Statistically, if Lyman, allegedly the number. Oh, I forgot seven. though. Matthews plays center, and that changes. It does change it does, everything. It changes a lot. It changes a it doesn't lot. Doesn't give you the Calder automatically. It doesn't no, but because they also throw the argument. Oh well, Line is playing with better players. Yeah, well, Artemi Panarin played with Patrick Kane last year, and who won the Calder? Yeah. And so also, take that argument Artemi, Artemi Panarin is twenty three. Hold on, Artemi Panarin started his career a year after Giroux. I'm How the saying, fuck was he considered a Calder? I'm just change saying. those rules. But here's the other thing. 
Uh, I'm just saying. If, yeah, if, oh, I'm with you. I'm center's right. harder to play. It doesn't automatically give you a trophy, though. Well, but you have to but win. But McDavid you almost know. won playing 50 games last year. Like, he and, didn't even have to, and he didn't even have to compete. Like, if he had come back earlier from his injury. Yeah, but he was over he a point of game. He had to compete. Who was going to get He the, was over a point of game. I understand so. that. If, if McDavid sure didn't did. compete, no one was scoring on him. I'm just saying, yeah, the media sure. train. No, I mean compete with the Calder Oh, yeah. The media train is blue and white. It always has been and always will be. But the thing is, yeah, is even when white. Marner had the lead, they weren't talking really about how Marner was going to win. White. Blue, blue, light, blue, and white. The, the talk has been that Matthews has just been a more all-around player. And trust me, as a, as a uh, Jets fan, I'm a Leaf fan. As a Leaf fan, I'm You heard it here first. I'm, Jets fan. Fuck you. <laughs> Nah, he was a Leafs fan. As a Leafs fan, fan. go ahead. No, I, I just, the more and more I hear about Matthews this and Matthews that, I just get sick and tired of it. What? Okay, he's a Toronto Maple Leaf. I understand that. But the more you talk him up means more people are just going to hate this guy yeah, but unconditionally for no God, reason. Greg. And he's a god. He is a, a god. He's a good man. player. He's no Hampus Lindholm. No, but he's a statistical still, god. He's still a good player. Oh my god, what if Hampus Lindholm gets traded? To the Leafs. Who, Hampus in his 14 points this year? Yeah. Great. Statistical God. But regardless... Statistical God, I saw one of those great. live and so did you. The assist. We can easily <laughs> argue Matthew's line for hours and days and we I'm don't get saying, anywhere. They both do. They both From my end, to say Matthew's has been the front runner all year is kissing the Maple Leafs' ass. 100%. Okay, this is, this is what it comes I'm down sorry, to. I'm sorry, but it is. Okay, hold on. If Is rookie just statistical points or is it breakdown to impact for your team? Both. Okay, well, fine. Then points-wise, Line is winning, but it's very close to Matthews, so I get that argument. Here's where I think Matthews would take the edge over Line A. Impact on your team in terms of... Okay, the Jets, even if they continue on this trajectory, I don't think they make playoffs. And so they're going to finish where? Like anywhere probably between, come, what, 8th to 12th? They're a point, they're a point out right now, okay, so they'll finish... If Leafs, even if they don't make playoffs, the fact that they're not finishing second last and they're going to finish maybe one or two points... or. Five to ten points out of playoffs, that's b- being a big stretch. They're going to be one or two spots out of playoffs if they don't make playoffs. I think they're making playoffs. That's That shows you how good Matthews is. Like, apart from but all the other rookies that they brought in. here's my point, too. He's having a, Matthews, a fantastic year. He's brought the Leafs. Like, that team is a lot better than anyone thought they were going to be this year. Yep. Fair enough. But there's been tons of good rookies that have elevated the play of their team and made their teams better. Yeah. Nathan McKinnon a couple years ago. Yep. How yeah. many things has Patrick Laine done this year that haven't been done in 30 years or ever? How many rookies do that? Why doesn't that get looked at? I'm just saying. Because he's Matthews still, is because great, but every he does he has not he hasn't done anything spectacular those, that any other rookie wouldn't probably do. But Matthews isn't doing those things because he's I'm one of saying. the only few guys, and that's where the argument yeah. where Laine plays on a better team. Stuff like this is happening because he's playing on a line with Shifley, Wheeler, Ehlers, whoever he's playing with. They're good players who are helping him get to those milestones. Matthews is essentially doing it on his own. And all year he's been playing with a rookie and then another blank player. Two two rookies. Or two rookies on his line. He's been with Nylander. Or Marner pretty much all year. He hasn't played. Oh, not Marner. Marner. So Nylander, Hyman, Brown. That's it. That's it. That's it. Well, there you go. He's playing with rookies. rookies. All rookies. But... I think that's such a scapegoat saying, well, Matthews has played with rookies, so clear. Yeah. Line A right now, I think if you have to pick, he's been the rookie of the year. As, as much as I think that Matthews is going to be a higher trajectory player, like he's going to bring more like, towards the team as a franchise center, but like, Line is just playing out of his mind. It just is. Like, it, I mean, it's one thing to play with good players, but you still have to do it. You still have to score. You still have to get You're points. You're both in the NHL. You, you still, still have I mean, to produce. You know, I, and it, honestly, it could go either way. But it's, it'll go right down to the wire, and it should. I, I just but think to it's say a Matthews is a clear cut favorite at this point. I'm like, eh. I just I'm sick of the comparison. I'm uh-huh. sick of talking about it because nothing's going to get solved because <laughs> every everyone's time. biased, yeah. and it's just it's ridiculous. And I still believe that if I had to vote, I, I'd have a hard time voting Matthews or Line A over Zach Wierenski right now. Because I think he's done a lot more with Columbus than either. Like it, it's tough, and I think if any other year he's in a in at least a front runner position as rookie of the year. Oh, there's lots. There's, there's lots tons of, of rookies. Lots of All yeah. right, so well, five of them. Are in tremendous. regards to the Pens game, Cro- Crosby got his thousands. Uh, I could like told you um, I was two happen. minutes into the game. Yeah. Three minutes, maybe. No, like ten. 
Ten? It was it, fast. It was the second goal. Oh, was it the second? No. Oh, I thought it was the first. No. Oh, I, Gino got the first one like a minute in. That's why. No, who got who scored a minute in? Like I it was like a minute. I, I, I didn't. Okay. I didn't watch. It. I, I didn't watch. I was the very game, happy so that Chris Kunitz got the got the goal, because who? What's Crosby without his suitcase, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Same coattails there. Yeah, but regardless. So what happened in that game between I, Crosby's thousand point and the end of the game? Mm-hmm. I didn't watch it. Couple questionable hits. That's what I was getting at. Okay, all I heard was Malkin hit Wheeler, and I'm trying to find this hit, and I can't find on it. On the internet? You can't find it? Type, Malkin, Essentially Malkin what happened, hit on Wheeler. Yeah. And watch it it's not no volume. Find. We'll not talk about find. it. Before that, though, Dan and I were arguing about this in our group chat. I thought if Malkin was going to get suspended for the Wheeler, Schultz... No, Dustin Bufflin got hit by... No, no Bufflin Schultz hit Schultz. Hit, he hit Schultz right on the numbers... And then he left the game. He didn't come back. But and it then wasn't lost... like he hit him. Like It wasn't like he was like five feet away from the boards. He was up against the boards and Bufflin pushed him. And he couldn't protect his face because his hands were on his stick and his head hit the boards. That's true. I, I don't... Like, he, he pushed him in the numbers, but he didn't drill him. He didn't cross-check him. He didn't hit him in the head. But the reaction... It was a bad was result. Flawed, yeah. It was, it, it, you know what? Honestly, it could, could have been a penalty. The was, reaction... Was that... it a penalty? I don't think so. It could have been. I don't think so. But I don't think it was a suspension-worthy yeah. hit. And then at some point in the game, Personally. I think... Mo- yeah, well, I mean, when you po- raise that point, like, I went I mean, and watched it, and he's, he's literally like, yeah, stick, hands on stick, maybe, maybe half a foot between yeah. him and the boards. Like, his head. Yeah. His body was against the boards. His head yeah. was farther his head back. goes boom. Who's this? And then, um, Schultz. Schultz on buff. Don't worry about that one. You don't have to see that one. I've seen that one. Like, okay. I mean, like, honestly, probably a penalty. And then somewhere sure. in between... in. In the game as well, Buff hit Mata, I think, or no, something. No, L- Lowry, Lowry hit Mata. Mata. But it was clean. Mata broke his hand. No, no, it was clean. Mata broke his hand. Like, and, six weeks. And the thing too is, people are getting so up in arms about it. It's like just because someone gets hurt doesn't mean it's a dirty hit. Well, on the Mata one, I don't remember yeah. seeing it. Okay, I mean, this is the biggest difference. Um, what are we comparing the seen? biggest difference to? With. Okay, well, we might as well just say it now. Okay, there's the hold ch- on. They played the Habs three one. Okay, well, Michelle yeah. Therrien got and he fired. Was fired. For Claude Julien. But you should say they lost 3-2 to Pittsburgh. Yes, they did. Oh, and of course Crosby got the game of winner, course. assisted by... Assisted by the guy that should have been kicked out of the game, according to Kerry Fraser. Of Jenny Malkin. Yep. Okay, hold on. So they played the Habs. They won 3-1. to one. Habs coach is Claude Julien, because Michelle Therrien got fired. Of course yep. it was on a Tuesday. Why not? Yeah. Um, when we don't do the show. Yeah, of course. What also happened on Tuesday was they announced the suspension of two players... Won five games. Uh, it was oh, Antoine Vermette oh. for slashing a ref. Ten games. No, it was ten games. No, he no got reduced t- to five. But it was announced at it ten on Tuesday 10. and reduced to five. Oh, my bad. Okay, season. well, either way, ten, then to five. And also, for attempting to make a guy go blind for the rest of his life, <laughs> you get six games, yeah. which is terrifying. I thought it was seven. I, I was thought it was seven. like, I would have, st- you guys heard it. I thought, like, easy ten. Like, the intent... First, first time, though. Come on! First I know! Time. I hate this stupid first time thing. It's okay. terrible. But, uh, okay, and then they went... The ha- uh, Jets played the Sens yesterday. They won 3-2. to two. In that game, there was a hit that happened. Mark Stone was coming across... Well, Mark Stone, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, second time he's been hurt by playing the Winnipeg Jets, which yep. doesn't help the case that his... He doesn't he like likes, Winnipeg. No. He's even from here and he doesn't like so, it. So... He shouldn't. He's trying to make a shot, make a move. Chuba estimates that he's going to do this, so he goes into hit. He's driving the middle, too, because he just funneled middle. right into the middle. What happens is he makes a cut. Chuba doesn't expect it. Chuba uses an extension of his body, and principal point of contact was ahead. Yeah. The and second you do that, like, as soon as I, I saw the hit, I'm like, suspension. And I don't think... The thing is, I'm seeing, like, just looking up at, on Twitter right now, there's a lot of people that just think that it was a clean hit. It's not. No, and it, anybody who doesn't think that Truba gets a suspension, re reevaluate everything. No. See the big and difference I, between. I will fully admit, I'm fine with him being suspended for that hit. He got suspended two games. Yes, I'm fine with it. First time offense. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He he didn't mean to do it, but he did. No, no, obviously not. And it's fine, but I'm sorry. And I read the article about the NHL's explanation about why they didn't review the Malkin hit, and. What was the what was the explanation? The explanation was it was very close. Uh, there's three things they look for because it was interference. Because basically what happened is Wheeler didn't have the puck. Stewart got he, there first. Stewart right got to the puck time. first. Malkin thought Wheeler was going to get to the puck, so he finished his check. Yeah, which was a direct elbow. He did was not elbow? his his body his 
arm is tucked in. I'm watching it right here, Dan. It looks pretty you much like You can't say that his elbow... See, no, he wait, follows wait, wait. through the hit. The two, the main thing is between the he two... He follows ba- through the hit, hits him in the head... Yeah. Hits principal board in context here, though. Leaves his feet... The, the, and interference. The so one, there's three strikes right there. The two he doesn't the, actually... His one skate is off the ice. That's it. When it, when the principal... And the, and the other thing is... Is Wheeler isn't standing up straight. He's bent over. Leaning from, for a puck? Exactly. Well, whatever. I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm, like, I'm telling maybe you. Maybe you review it. Maybe you review it. Maybe it's a... Sm- like, a fine? That's, that's a hit to the head. That's a, a penalty. That's a minor penalty you call in the game. No. There's Walking a distinct difference between the Truba hit and the Wheeler hit. 100%. And I'm not trying to be I, a dick because I, I don't... Agree to, I, I agree to disagree. I think it is 100% at least reviewable. I, I agree with you. I think it's an reviewable And they didn't even hit. bother to do that. So, I mean... Well, maybe they but did. But it's not a conspiracy but against the I don't think. Oh, I don't think it's a conspiracy. But I think it was a dirty hit. And Bob McKenzie said it was a dirty hit. And Kerry Fraser said it should have been five-minute major interference in a game misconduct, which then takes out the overtime goal. But the I'm other, just saying what people are saying. It's the other fine thing if it's, is, is... I'm not saying that Truba shouldn't be suspended because his hit wasn't bad. That's not what I'm saying. Fine with that. But uh, honest to God, the NHL gave a big, long explanation, and it seems a lot like they're just trying to find a way to protect one of their superstars. But Malkin hasn't been suspended before. Uh, it doesn't matter. I, oh, I, I like think... once, once, because he didn't, uh, he no showed an all-star game. What should have happened is that there, there should have been, been there should have been a review. There should have been a hearing. It, I'm not saying he needs needs to be suspended, but they should have taken yes. it as seriously as the truth. That I agree with. And they I didn't. think they, need they basically to. were like, no. And then they didn't even release an explanation until they suspended Truba, and everyone was up in arms about it. So to me, no. now they're backpedaling, trying to cover their ass, saying, "Well, we didn't suspend him because of this." Yeah, and I I'm think... sorry, but it was a bad hit. Whether he meant to it or not, it was a bad hit. I fully agree. And my thing is... He shouldn't have been... Is, and you know what? Whatever. It's it's not going to... I mean, him being suspended does nothing for the Jets going forward. It doesn't matter. But if you're the Jets, you have to be pissed. Because your guy gets suspended for rightfully so. You're not mad that your guy's suspended. You're mad that there's no consistency in player safety. Well, they're, But they're two different... Like, okay, the Mal- we'll start with the Malkin in from my side. I saying. didn't think it was a sp- suspension, basically, because Wheeler's leaning for the puck. Malkin was going to hit him to begin with. And by the time he it's contacts, I agree with Greg that he contacts him on the shoulder. He it got, is interference. No, no, he and got also, in the NHL's explanation, they say, oh, well, there's no way that Malkin could have known that Wheeler wasn't going to get to the Doesn't puck. Doesn't matter. That... You can't make that call, NHL. But he was, I'm sorry, you can't. He was going to hit whoever was near that puck. But you can't make that call That's for him. True. You can't say, oh, he didn't know. You can't do that. But... Who, someone's going to go drill someone in the head and say, I didn't think they were going to, you know, I thought they'd be ready for it. This is the two main differences that, I'm sorry, I find, but... that I find between the Truba hit on Stone and the Gino and the Malkin hit is that Truba, you chicken wings. So he adjusts oh, to go I'm in not there. arguing the Truba hit. It's yeah. Malkin, Malkin, his arm doesn't move his body. Malkin's was more of a direct shot to the head than Truba's. But Malkin, but he hits Even the shoulder and then he contact. rides up to the face because he's correct. He's, so he's a, what is he, a righty? So he's who? a righty, but he's back. So they're basically saying, as so long as you make shoulder. body contact, you can do whatever you want to the no. guy's head. Well, no, yes, that's a hit. <sighs> like, okay. that's what they're doing. Go, as a referee, what are you coming from? I'm just saying. So, what I, I, I stand, like, I think, I agree with that. The NHL needs to review it. They need to release a reason why they're not suspending him. I think you could make an argument, as Dan's making, that yes, okay, the, does one of his feet leave? Yes. Does he follow through his hit with an extension of his body? Yes. Is there head contact? Yes. Was it a penalty in the first place? Yes. Is it malicious? Probably not. He's finishing his check. Was This is the Truba one. No, this is Wheeler one. Okay. Is Wheeler in a defenseless position? I would say more than yes. I think he was. But you have to, I think, as the NHL, for transparency purposes, you have to come out and either say why you're not giving him a hearing or why you're not suspending him. Because I, I think that you, you need to set a precedent for consistency in the league, and they haven't done it. They showed gr- like gross um, incompetence with the Nyquist hearing. Yeah, like, on Spurgeon, where exactly. he pitchfork him in the face. Exactly. Uh, it, it's, I can agree with Dan in the sense that they're trying to protect All-Stars. I don't think it's a suspendable hit, in my own opinion. I can see where Kerry Frazier's coming from, but I think when he's making that 
call when he's in the game, he's not making that call in the game. I, I really... It's so hard for a ref to make that distinct 100% game major in a game, in a game. It is such a hard call to make. It has to be cut and dry, and once you break it down, sure. And I'm sure that referee would have, might have called it differently if he saw the broken down clip. Regard, like, and that's where I think the suspension would come in, is a game misconduct, that's it. He's, done, he's gone for the game. Which, yes, would null the Which would overtime. change a lot of things, but I mean... It, Regardless of that, whatever. I think uh, mm. to dwell on something like this and... Look around it as negativity. I, I think is bad. I think it's. I think it's up to fans. I think it's up to people to say we need more consistency in the NHL player safety department. But like, it's very clear. Truba uses an extension of his body. Principal point of contact was ahead. It's an, uh, it's not an intentional play. Neither of these are intent to injures. Neither of these are really that bad. It's just it's hockey. He's going it's to clear his man from the puck, yeah. which it's, is what it's, you're told. It's, it's Stone, what happens. If Stone doesn't make the effort to get out of the way, it's a clean hit. Exactly. So, I mean, really, it's his own fault. Yeah, and but like... it doesn't excuse the fact that he hit him in the head. It's the same as when, when we've seen, ty- like, these guys who try to make that move, and then you use the knee as the extension, and there goes the guy's ACL. Like, it's you're not trying to hurt the guy, it just, it happens. You're and I hate to, to say this, be, like, I hate to say this, because it's, injury's not supposed to matter. It doesn't, it's not supposed to be a, a factor in suspension, but you almost it it hundred percent is it should be though it and it hundred percent is because Stone has, probably has another concussion and Wheeler was fine. Wheeler yeah. got up and tried to be the third man in on Malkin. I mean, yeah. you know, maybe maybe Wheeler should have banged his head into the wall in the dressing room and faked the concussion he or was something. The last man in. Oh damn it! Yeah, uh, I mean, it, you know, I, I'm not saying that it's worth dwelling on, but I think the Jets have a right to be a little PO'd. And it, okay. The and, Jets uh, had hey, a very interesting week of hockey. They Pittsburgh their... fans, if this hit was the other way around, would you be happy with it? No. No. If this had happened no. to Crosby, Wheeler would people be dead. Still want, people still want Steckel so, to be suspended Pittsburgh for Crosby. Pittsburgh fans, Smith. maybe you should bite your tongue a little bit. No, and I, I, I understand that. but uh, Just saying. I think that... Because there's a lot of them on Twitter that were like, oh, stop complaining. All right, turn the table. See how you like it. Well, they weren't injured. You just said that, though. But I'm so just I mean, saying. Was there been a suspension? Probably not. I, I, I just so don't no. think... I think it's so hard to call that one a suspension. And I think when I saw a troop, I'm like, definite suspension. Well, even what, in on like, you can count one and a half Mississippi. I'm going to ask you something. So it's easy to move? say it's not a suspension now that Trubas hit happened. If Trubas hit never happened, what what do you say? I still said no suspension. It's a lot harder... Because, again, a friend of the show was texting... It's a lot harder to argue that, though, if the Trubas hit doesn't happen. You're right. Because you have nothing to compare it to. But the other thing, too, I'm is... I'm just saying. But they're two I, different. I think... Yeah? Like I said, maximum game is gone. I think that that's the maximum. You these are the types of things that you can never get out of hockey. Unfortunately, they they want to try happen. to get rid of they want to try to get rid of head contact as much as possible. But having an explanation would help. Exactly, that's the thing. Transparency. That's the there only no thing I'm asking for, and that's why Jets fans are pissed only off. Only thing no asking for. And I that's I think that I think that's Dan's point. It is. Yeah. We just want transparency from the league, and I think that should be fair for everyone in the league because there has been some questionable stuff across the league this year. Yeah. In so many Did different you see, um, Alex Chiasson? Sunday night they were playing, um, or last Sunday, Flyers were in Calgary. First period, Chiasson, like, Spears. How about uh, the four slew foots against the Leafs that the Flames had? Sam Bennett. How about uh, Brad Marchand and two slew foots? Exactly. He well, got fined. But no, no, but Chiasson got ejected. Yeah. Like, game, oh, bro- oh, okay. oh, like five minutes but into the game was weird. It, it, it's, it's weird that certain players just seem to push the envelope and never go past it. Like, there's probably moments, I'm sure, where Antoine Roussel probably deserves at least a hearing or something for some of the shit. Mm, we slew for the Bufflin earlier this year. Yeah, so th- there's just... Buffalo also kicked the share of them, so yeah. I mean, maybe they say How that. How else are you going to get a guy that big down? Oh, Speaking, uh, and I think we need to move on from Still. this. Yeah, Because yeah. I, I think we're on the same page. We're both looking for transparency. Yeah. Our opinions about the hit change, as this is why we have three people. Because if it was two people that agreed with everything, it would be boring. 100%. And I'm a big provider. <laughs> like, I hate the fact that when there's a big hit and someone gets hurt, people are like, hockey's too violent. No, it's not. Sh- shit's going to happen. Just, they're hockey plays. There's going to be bad plays. Them. They're going to go either both ways. I mean, Dustin Bufflin's had a share of hits that he's hurt people, and people are like, that should be a suspension, blah, blah, blah. It just sucks. Clean hit. He's Ottawa, in two games, they played the Leafs and the Jets. In two games, they lost Hoffman, Stone, Wingles, Wingles. and... 
And they Hoff- lost Wingles last night. Yeah, well, yeah, they lost hit- Stone Hoffman Wingles last night. Wingles got hit by Buff. It was clean, but he it got was hit. clean. It was just uh, his and head hit the boards, and then they Hoffman lost Ryan just kinda, on Saturday. They lost four guys. What even happened with Hoffman? He just he, he just didn't come he back. He just for didn't come period. back for the second period. He was scared. <laughs> he was scared. Uh, he guys, <laughs> Truba looks real mean today. Don't trust him. There you go. And that's the kind of level I want from Truba. Like. Push that envelope and play that way. And that's like he's been everyone, their best defense. That's what he's capable of, yeah. and that's what they drafted. Um I do have to say two things. Oh wait, I, to to play on your Truba thing. Fun fact, I'm sure I've mentioned this years ago. Uh there's a tradition in Michigan hockey that the meanest and hardest hitting like the meanest slash hardest hitting guy on the team, they uh they stitch MF on his yes. in, on his gloves. You have to Truba had that the year yes. he played for them. MF stands for motherfucker. Yeah. That was his nickname. Oh, really? yeah. On Truba. <laughs> yeah, so they he's mean. He's mean Anyways, guy. sorry, go ahead. Uh the two things. Since the last two podcasts were kind of anti Bufflin, he clearly listened to us because he's been playing lights out. Well, the last week, like the last four that. games, have been probably his best. Ever since he touched my shoulder, tapped me on the shoulder. That's what it is. That he is. took all my skill because last time I scored in beer league, I keep track of my own stats because our league is rigged and against me. I haven't scored <laughs> since August eleventh. That's Ooh. over six months ago, people. <laughs> but anyways, it's longer than he that. took. He took all my skill and I gave you. it to him. And I'm like, yep, I knew I was NHL caliber. I just have to pass my knowledge on to an NHLer go. to do it. Uh. He's been the player that they signed for last yeah. the last week has been what he can be. And I think it's because they reduced his minutes. I think his time on ice has dropped. Yeah. Well, until tomorrow and they Well true after. yeah, true response. <laughs> he's playing yeah. forty tomorrow. Oh, who do you put Perfect. are you putting Morrissey back with him then? Probably. Yeah, I think you have who's, to. Who's yeah, continuing to show I mean, he's shining and his strength. transition, a lot of people were worried about this year. He's he's probably been one of their top three. The and best. Some people yeah. are a little shaken. Yeah. Who shakes? Fuck. You're the only person who calls him Shakes. Catch it on. No, it's Shakes not. Shakes is great. <sighs> no. Oh, what's his nickname then? Joshy Momo. Hmm? The Mo. The Mo. 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 I don't like Mo. Shakes sounds Mo. way cooler. I like Mo. Let's call him Mo. Screw you guys. It's Shakes and it's never changing ever. Oh, I just want to say, true uh, Bufflin. What was the play where he kicked it to Perot? Oh, that wasn't a pass. He was he trying to get. He, he was right trying to get it to his own stick. Look at him. Watch that replay. I don't he care. didn't mean to That's pass still that. Beautiful. The puck yeah, was sure. off. How did he? Yeah, how sure. was he trying to get it to his stick when the, he used his stick to pass it? He put it to his feet. He didn't use to his kick foot. It he didn't guy. use a foot. He took his stick like this and put it, put yeah, it behind and him. Kicked one-handed. it with his foot. No, he didn't. Watch no, the replay. He kicked, he kicked it, it with his, his foot. No, he didn't. He kicked it. He took one hand. No, behind him. No, he didn't. He took one hand and put it right behind him and kicked it. Pull that. Pull that. Google it. Google it. Pull that clip. Pull that clip. The other thing I Anyways, was going to say. Anyways, not a pass. He was being selfish, and Perot took a day. You know what I realized as, as in the last week? Go. Camp can never say anything nice about the Jets. Whenever something happens to the Jets, he has to find something else to be equally as mad about to take away from what happened to the Jets. What do you mean? The Malkin hit. Oh, but the Bufflin hit. Malkin's fine. Bufflin. Bufflin, Bufflin, Bufflin. Now, I, I now, said from day one now that wasn't this, a suspension. Now this. Oh, no. He kicked it. He didn't pass it. He Watch, kicked it. He kicks it, and he's trying to get you, it to yeah, it's a kick. It's, it's a, a kick. kick. Show him the he replay. Put, but... He, he is. You're right. He is trying to get it to his own stick, but he got that. pushed off. And Perot it? grabbed. It's still a beautiful yeah, play. Yeah, Perot got of nice all the guys. Regardless of that, Buffley had a great week. Like Josh Morris, he's great. Buffley had a That's great it. week. Yep. Lina had a better week and was yep. named first star of the NHL yep. this week, and that came out today. He did. And the Jets now have I this week. I don't know. Oh possible, my God! They have two wins. Uh, three. Oh, they have two wins in a row right They're now. Three zero and one. No, no, but, no, but they exactly. two in a row. Seven out of eight won points here. They got one four in a row. Seven out of eight points here. Is this now their time to start pushing towards the playoffs? Are they going to make a playoff push? You know what's going to happen? If they win tomorrow, they're going to have a ton of momentum, and then guess what? They have their bye week. <sighs> yeah. So that's their bye week after the Toronto game? After the yeah, game. Yeah. Right after the Next Toronto week, they don't, they don't play again. Which again. Uh, yeah, teams coming off the bye week. Bye week. What teams are we going to talk about next week? week? The Leafs, it, because we know it's there's something goofy happening tomorrow. There has to Something be. Something will happen. Matthews the, is getting a hat trick, and then when they meet in the Stanley Cup final in like 13 years, 13 years. on different teams, Line is going to be on Florida, Matthews will be on Vancouver. Las Vegas. <laughs> Las Vegas. They're going to have dueling Hatties every game. Fuck. That's how it's going to work. I'm very excited for tomorrow. I want to watch it. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch well. the game start to finish. Wow. I I'm going to watch that for a Leaf Jets game in I think I'm going to go out somewhere, watch it, put my Leaf jersey on and just wait for them to disappoint me. Maybe I'll join you. The race to I 30. Have a Leaf jersey. 
What they, if one of them hits it tomorrow? What like, if they both hit it tomorrow? Where are they both at? 28. 28. They're tied. But Line A's got 52 points. Matthews has got 49. Nine, 49. And Line has got four games. less games. Oh, four less games played. Closer and closer to those three but here's, pointers. Here's the other thing. Oh, Marner's hurt! I know. Damn it. We're still on Jets talk. Oh, okay, good. Uh, are we? Yes. I don't know. Oh. No, there's still. I have more, I have more questions. <laughs> go, for you guys. go. What are these questions? Well, are they are, are they gearing up for the playoffs right now? Jets? Oh, no, I mean, they're not making playoffs. They're, they're making a push, but I mean, they'll make a push. Sure, you but have I to think, think too. Like they're only a point out, but they have three three to four games more played than everyone else. So yeah. even if they finish, even if they had the at, at when they're at, when they're at eighty two, even if they're in the playoffs, they could get bumped out just games in hand. Okay, That's you know right. what? Here's a question because by the time we do, and next they can't podcast, really afford to like I, they can't really afford to lose more than two in a row. Yeah. For the rest of the year, and they have to put on a winning streak. I mean, I'm I'm not expecting them to. We're a week out, or a week in. But they're playing better, which is. We're eight days away from trade deadline right now, or nine days away. Okay. Are Jets buyers or sellers, or Stamp Pat? Stamp Pat. Stamp Pat. I think if there's one guy you can move, you're. I think they're going to try to move Pavlik. I think they're going to try to move Enstrom, and I think they're going to try to move Thorburn. Stafford. I think they'll try and move. And Stafford. So they, there are certain players they'll get rid of, but they're not sellers in the sense that they need to shake up their team. I think they're just going to give away some support players. I think if they can get rid of Enstrom, I think they will just to help them for the expansion draft. Yeah, exactly. Because that makes a big difference. Okay. Do they send Pavlik back down to the Moose? No. When he's back? I would. I would not. Well, at this point, Hellebuck's, his in the last five games, he's at a 923 save percentage. They've he's won his last three starts. Weird that they're winning when he plays well. So like this is what this team's needed. They've needed goaltending. At this if point, they can get like s- if Hellebuck mentally is in a better spot now and he's playing better. I mean, at this point, why like Pavlik being there is not really like his numbers aren't good. Like it's not doing anything for him. I would keep Pavlik over Hutch. Is I'm not sending Hellebuck. I'm saying I'd keep Pav over Hutch for the rest of the season and just let Hutch ride pine. But they need someone for the expansion. No, draft. like, but no, he's riding pine as in sitting in the press. The press but why have three goals in your roster? If you don't need to. That's exactly. Done. Send I agree with down. you. I, send I, them down yeah. or or try and move them. I yeah. don't think they'll be able no to. No one will but, take him. I don't think. Wow, well, that we know of. I mean, St. Louis. Whew. I'd go after. I mean, you a aren't before I go after. You, you aren't really going to get anything for him. You're just going to dump, dump. Yeah, you're dump, just dump, dump a contract. Yeah, of the tra- of the transactions that happened this week, it's. Clear what's happening. <laughs> like the transaction. teams are just position themselves. But the thing yeah. too is he's on the IR right now, so they can't sit him down when yeah. he's on the IR, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, but you know. next question. Okay, I was thinking about this yesterday because the Coyotes wore their old jerseys again. There's a name for them. I just forget what they're called, but they're awesome. The '96 jerseys. I don't sure. Know well, that's what we there. call them. Yeah. yeah. But on the end, uh, they but them. they but they wore them again last night for Hockey Day in America. Okay. But. Do you think you could ever see the Jets wear a Thrasher's jersey? I don't think they will. No, they're trying to I, distance I was, themselves. Exactly, cause... because I was trying to think of it. I'm like, I've never seen Colorado wear a Nordiques jersey. I don't remember a time I've ever seen Carolina wear a Whalers jersey. I've never seen the Flames wear an Atlanta Flames jersey. Uh, their alternates are awfully close. Who's? Flames. The most, like the White C? The they most literally just ever, changed the font and made it a, a, a from C an A to a C. Yeah. The, the most I could ever see, and I don't think that they'd ever admit that that's why they're doing it, would be to do some kind of a baby blue yeah. style. And I don't With think, a dark blue sleeve and that I, says Winnipeg. And I don't think they'd ever admit that it's a throwback. And I, I, I mean, like, you know, like, it's gotten to the point now where, like, they're, they, they don't even talk about Atlanta. Like, no. even, even when they mention Jets records now, it's... Jets 2.0. Like, it's to the point where the Atlanta stuff's just... Yeah, um... They did mention, though, I think Patrick Laine, I think he's... He might have even passed it now. I think he has the the record for uh, rookie goals. for rookie points, and I think he's only one away from rookie goals for the franchise. And he's already... For the Jets? Or for Jets. F- oh, okay, because I was like... Thrashers. For Jets Thrashers. What? K- yeah. Kovalchuk had 29 goals in his first year. And points-wise. He had... Because he broke his collarbone. He <gasps> missed 30 games. Oh, he, he had right. sixty some odd points, so he's got a little ways to go, but he probably can do it. Um, I think if and this didn't and, and, happen, and he's already like thirty third in franchise history for goals scored, and this, he's played fifty games. If this didn't happen already, <laughs> Brian Little, I read this a couple days ago. He's like two points away from becoming second all time in points Thrashers Jets history. Oh, cool! But then he's two hundred behind. No, Kovalchuk. he's 
Um, I don't know if he's that. He'd be second. No, right now he's either second or tied for second or third all time. I don't know. If you're, well, I, maybe because I I know Thrasher's they were, Jets in general. Because I know they were talking a while ago that Blake Wheeler, if you were to count Jets one point oh, not Thrasher's, just Jets one point oh, and his points with the Jets. What do you mean Jets one point oh? Like if the, you the, counted the old Jets. If you counted the original Jets, oh, okay, didn't count Atlanta. Counted Wheeler's production for, since he's been a Jet. Yep. He's like already fourth all time in Winnipeg for scoring. Behind probably. Howard, Howard, Howard Chuck. Chuck Carly? Uh, no, not Carly. He wasn't here long enough. I don't Steams. know. He was a defenseman, too. But. He's still good. Maybe. I mean, Little Not 80s there. defenseman. Hey. Are you yeah. shitting me? When did Paul Bob Coffey. play? Paul Coffey. Okay. Ray Bork, too. Yeah. But who did Paul Coffey play with? Yeah. You okay? Who, did, a who did Randy Carlisle play with when he was a Winnipeg Jet? Ducky. Exa- exactly. Ducky. But, no, I don't think they were. He didn't play with Ducky? I don't think they were on the same team. The superstar of Ducky? No, I don't think so. Huh? Huh. I don't. I've always wanted to ask Dale Howard check how the third round of the playoffs were, but he wouldn't be able to answer for me. So never mind. <laughs> Didn't he win a cup with a different team? I don't think so. The only other team he played um, was Sabers. You also have to. I don't think Sabers won when he was on the team. Go check. Go just check a, for me. A, I, I'll bite my own tongue if I'm wrong for a, sure. Go. A, a quick. No. Do we find a, out the a, little? A quick stat on Brian Little for this yeah. year. He's played 39 games. He's got 30 points. He's got sixty. Well, Line has got fifty-two s- and fifty-four. I'm just saying, Little missed the first two months, and he's almost a point a game. And really? he's got sixteen goals. Okay, do he's we know? Probably the most underrated. Player. Do we know so, the nice. amount of? I don't know. I can look. Are it you up. going to a hockey DB for Dale Howardchuk? For Dale Howardchuk. Okay. Oh yeah, and he would never have won with the Philadelphia Flyers when he played there. Some fan doesn't even know he played for the Flyers. I don't. I did not know that. Jeez. I learned that today. I only yeah, start no, cheering for teams, and from the day I decide to cheer is what counts. That's it. Yeah, he played for the Blues first. Okay. Season. Anyways, let's move on because this is probably great audio. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. So go. So did he never win a cup? He never won a cup. And did he make the cup final? Probably not. Who? Uh he might have. He made it to the third round with. Uh, Damn Florida. it! Who? I I believe. Well. I'm well, how not. many games? How many games? Who, who are you talking about? Mm. Maybe not. Dale Howard Chuck. Oh. Dale Howard Chuck. He played for the Flyers? Apparently. Hmm. I learned that today. 96, 97. I'm going to go 96, 97. 96, 97 is when he played for the Flyers? Yeah. Oh, he's real good then, for sure. 97 playoffs. 96, 97 playoffs. Okay, so while I'm looking this up, Matthew scored a goal last night against the Carolina Hurricanes. Goal of the year. Gardner rings around from behind his net up to the blue line where Matthews was, and Matthews just, as he's falling, puts it into the net. Yep. Cam Ward gave him the biggest opening ever to score that goal. Five hole too, right? Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. It was a nice goal. Yeah. But it's not like it's no Alexander Ovechkin goal. And people it's were no, and that's the thing. People, uh, people are like, oh, it's it, it's just as good as you. The natural no. athletic no. ability it takes to score when you're falling and to know where the puck is. Oh! Game changer. He did make it, didn't he? Oh, Stanley Cup runner up. I stand corrected. Runner up, how do you not know your own team's because history? Because I just said, like a t- two minutes ago, the mu- I started cheering for them, and when I start cheering is when history starts. Oh, so you don't, so you can never cheer for Bobby Clark again or be happy about what he did. Oh, he's fantastic. Or the Broad Street Bros. He's a history. No. He's no, just, no. Yeah, no, yeah, they were there. Who? Exactly. Great answer, Dan. What? Yeah. Season MVP that year was Dominic Hasek for Buffalo. Yeah, you remember Dominic Hasek? That top goalie he is? Very good. Flopper. Very good goalie. Flop. Nonetheless, so, the Matthews yeah. goal, we'll see it, it nice. on TSN. It it's is nice. a nice goal, but holy shit, the amount of coverage it got. He has a natural athletic ability. But it's he not falling. about it. He Guys, knew where the puck was. He plays, for the, he plays for God's team. Uh, yeah, we already know that. I'm a Toronto fan, and I'm already sick of seeing the goal. I love it. I'll watch it every day, all day. Every day. Love Just... It. They need to stop talking about him and stop pumping his tires so much. No. Let the guy fucking play. He does play, and he gives him reason to keep pumping his tires. It's true. He's so fucking good. He's very good. All right. Are we going to the mailbag? We're going to open up that was bag? That was the start of the mailbag. Oh, that was the start of... You have to say you're opening the mailbag. No, no, no. It's gone now? That actually poured out of the mailbag. Perfect. Well, Michel Therrien, did you hear his contract that he... Or um, Claude Julien, did you hear the contract he got? I did not. Starting next year, allegedly, but it's been confirmed by a few sources... His contract is five years, five mil per. Not bad. As a coach of the Habs. Not bad. How did he earn that? Come on. You know what's also funny? Because of a track record that he doesn't 
Right. He coached I some really good teams. Earned it, kind both, of could, both times, Claude Julia, or sorry, both times, Michelle Terry has been fired by Montreal. Guess who was his Claude replacement? Julian. Yeah. Both times. You want here's go. You want to know why Montreal has won a Stanley Cup in almost 50, in like 20, 20, 30 years? That's that's because they only hey, hire. They Let's just recycle the, old ideas and they, hope it's better. They love the game of musical chairs. No, because Nothing here's their <laughs> here's their problem. They have a fan base that is. What would it be? Linguist. Linguistical. Linguistical. Sh- like, they demean people who are. What's it called when you boo the national anthem, the American national anthem? That's just rude. That's what they are. They're rude. But no. But here's the thing. Like, they can't bring an English speaking coach in because they won't allow it. Like the the fans won't allow it, and the media won't allow it. You know how much. So you- like, you're limited on who you can get. They're gonna their next goal. Their next coach once Julian's done in three years, Jacques Martin's gonna be back. Because you, you, there's only so many coaches. Patrick or Guy Boucher. Guy Boucher. Patrick Wall or Patrick Wall. But they, you know what? They showed that they weren't going to sign him. They didn't want him. Yeah. By getting Julian. Or maybe he declined it. Um, well, apparently they asked for permission to talk to Gerard Gallant from Florida. Oh. And, but they didn't actually follow through with talking to him, is what I heard. Because you have to ask for permission. Which, I question, what Boston? I wouldn't give him permission until after the season's over. You have to play Montreal probably at least one more time. But they probably, yeah. Who's Regardless. the last coach to get fired and hired in the same season? To oh, start Probably, the, like, right on our time. To I start hired. the year with one team and finish the year with a different team. I don't know. Because normally guys don't get hired the same season. It's Usually it's the assistant normal. that normally it's steps the next up. Year. Yeah. No, you're right about that. I don't know. Probably Randy Carlo. I don't know with who, but I'm just going to yeah. throw a name out there. Do you know now who is the longest tenured coach in the Eastern Conference. Uh, with one team? Who has been with... Because Tarion was the longest tenure coach in the Eastern Conference. Yep. Who is it now? Vigneault for Rangers? Nope. No, Close. Either. Close. This guy was hired two months before. Jack Capuano. Islanders. No, he's He fired. just got fired. He got fired. Perfect. Dude. Um, Tampa? He's, what do you mean? Cl- John Cooper? Tampa? Yep. John Cooper. Really? Really? Is yep. that four that or five prick? But What do you mean he's a prick? He's, a he's two- great. And he's a lawyer. So he knows all the fancy words. It's great. And then number two is Elan Vignon. And then I believe it's... Because, uh, like, when you think about it, go through every team in the Eastern Conference. Yep. Barry Trotz, new team. Two years. Mike Sullivan. I don't know what team Mike Sullivan's. Co- uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, two years. Hacksaw. Two years. Uh, Tortorella. Year and a half. Year and a half. What about Carolina? I don't know the country. I don't know either. <laughs> and I was thinking yesterday when I was looking through I'm like, maybe it is Carolina. But I feel like they just fired their coach and hired someone new like two years ago. They did. They got Bill Peters or whatever. Damn, Dan, there it is. There it is. Okay. That's why you're here. Yeah. And then, well, Capuano just got fired for Doug Wade. Then you have Babcock that's been in for two years. You have Guy Boucher who's in this year. Yeah. It's, uh, then you look at Montreal, they just got Claude Julien. Biles like, has only been a few years. Ottawa. Buff- I said Boucher okay. already. My bad. And then Detroit, they lost Babcock, so now they have... One Two years. Two. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy, eh? So Cooper's at what, four years? No, years? he's at like th- three and a half, I think. But then you look at like the, the West. The West, you, well, you have Quinville, Quinville that's been there for years. Sutter. Quinville's like a hundred w- like Sutter's only been around there f- since 2011. 12. No, 12, yeah. But that's still five years. Yeah, that's fair. Compared to the East. I mean, Paul yeah, Maurice true. would probably be the longest tenured coach in the East. I want to know what yeah, Sutter does. He's over three years. I want to know what Sutter does on his day off. Like, does That's he sit outside and he's objects. like, oh, I appreciate you, son, today. Like, as he's sitting on his on his deck reading a book. I don't, I don't know. know. Very All long. right. Oh, you guys, fun fun little fact. Yeah. I think this is the fastest this has ever happened to my, in, since I've watched hockey. The Colorado Avalanche, officially yesterday, were eliminated from President's Trophy contention. They have 21 games left to play in the season, and they got eliminated. Oh! Huh. Oh, oh! I thought you were going to say playoffs. I'm like, that's really early. No, How no. many wins do they have? Colorado? 15. I don't know, but either way, like, the, I guess they break it down by, like, if you can catch the amount of points that that yeah. team currently has. Oh, well, yeah, and of they course. Cannot. They cannot. They no, cannot. No, they can't. <laughs> that's simple math. Well, I don't, so, math wasn't my strong If you cannot seat. catch the team, the last place team in the playoffs, you cannot make the playoffs. Yeah, exactly. No, no, so but the President's, every tro- <laughs> President's Trophy. So you're saying right there's a disparity of 42 points between the best team and the worst team? Right now. Yeah. That's not even... I think it's happened before. But, like, this early, though? Probably. 20 there's, games out? There's been teams that go off. The only other worst There's team. been teams that go off at the start of the year. 
No, no, but I'm talking about like how bad and how fast it happened. Like the only other team I could think of is like Thrashers Year One, and Colorado is going to obliterate their records. You want to know losing. how bad Colorado is? Go. Let me. They played it. five less games than the Jets, and they have ten more losses. <laughs> and the Jets aren't very good. Like the Jets are like. Dude, dang. Col- oh man, that, that's that's a that's an in between a- playoffs and draft like. Colorado, do something, guys. Like, do Get something. rid of Joe Sack. My question was going to be, now, under the Habs, Julian is 0-1. Okay. Is it, like... They're coming off they, the bye if, week, though. But here's my question. New coach. Oh, fuck. It. The bye week's so stupid. If they, fall, if they falter because both Ottawa, Boston, and Toronto are on their heels for that division, if they don't hold their division... Do you think Bergevin's held accountable? Yes. Do you think they'll actually get rid of him? Please, at some point do it. They have to. Yes, it's time. At some point, you have to look at the guy who's making the decisions and say... I agree with you. I agree but then that. who could be a French GM? I mean, I don't know. I don't know any French GMs off the top Julian of Julian will do a He'll do everything. Yeah, he'll do... He'll run the... Maybe a the Jill, or Who's that guy? Molson? Molson will do everything. Yeah, there you go. He owns everything. But no, like, that, like maybe Montreal isn't as good as everyone thinks they are. We already know. They're as good as their goalie takes them. Yep. yep. As far as, you know. Which brings me to the next thing I was going to say. What happens if Dubnik's off in the playoffs? Do you think Minnesota can do anything without him playing, like, What do you extra? mean off in the playoffs? Like, like if he's not, like, if he's oh. not playing If he's not Vesna, a brick wall? If, if he's not they playing They can still Vesna. score, so I think they're fine. Yeah? I don't I think, think they're a cup contender if he's not very good. I, I think, think they can win a round or two, maybe, but I don't think they're a serious cup contender if he's not on his game. I think, hypothetically, if he makes the first round, plays out of his mind, they make second round, he gets hurt or something, they're a good enough team, I think, to... I have them going to the Western Conference Final. Okay. But that's just, like, that's 20 games out from... Yeah, we, we have to have this conversation later on. Yeah. They, they can be in the Conference Final if they don't play for Chicago. <laughs> or this is the year they, they conquer Chicago... And then get to the conference final, and then lose. Or they life. conquer Chicago round one, and yeah. then they get dumped by whoever they play in the second round. Yeah, exactly. It okay, like, oh, something weird. So the Bruins. That'd be fantastic. I'd be down with that. The Bruins have been undefeated under a new coach. Okay, who's their new coach? I don't know his name. Okay, cool. I've done all my research, guys. It's okay, it's. Are you surprised? Like, was no. Julian the problem? There, there's or? always a mo- there's always a swing when new coach yeah. comes in. Except look at the show. Jets when Maurice came in. Look how good no. they were for exactly. Year and a half, really. Well, even so, just, like, immediately. Yeah. Yesterday, on Hockey Day in America, Patrick Kane scored a goal. Okay. He is the first American-born player to score 20 goals in each of his first 10 seasons in the NHL. Nice. He carried the one, followed the two. He has 200 goals. Did you know that? He has more than that. How many goals? I think he's, I think he's <laughs> like, 300 and something. Do you mind looking that up? Other milestone hit, Yarmar Yager hit 1,900 points on his 45th birthday. Surprisingly enough. And then yesterday, the quirky thing that happened, Shane Doan... So they wore their old jerseys, like you said. It was Hockey Day in America. And Mike Gardner was there signing jerseys. And accidentally signed Doan's jersey that he had to play with. What? Yep. How did that happen? Patrick I don't Kane know. has 723 points in 717 games. How, How many, many goals? goals? 271. Oh. Oof. So he averages about 27. Oh, by points. the way, um, a not bad stat. This is going back to the Jets. I forgot to mention it. Yep. Mark, Mark Scheifele, he's hit 200 points in 283 games. That's not bad. How many of those are empty net points? At least 30. No question. No question. <laughs> Don't put it in. 200 can't points, do, so scores. Okay, how hard would that be for me to go back and try and figure that out? They keep game logs, right? Yeah. Oh, that take forever. That would take a long time. You'd to have prove to a back. point? Yeah. You know, yeah, but then once you got that number, you can just can t- you can keep But here's it. the other thing. It must too. be a tough it's life that Patrick Lenny's got the most power play points for rookies, and he's probably got the most empty net goals on top of that, too, right? Lenny? Just shows no, you how I good he is without the empty netters. I don't. I don't think he has the lead for rookie empty netters. For rookie power play points, I don't think he does. Oh, well, you I'm said just saying. Netters. I'm pretty sure Nylander has the. I don't think so. They, they they said yesterday he's got or he's got the most five on no scheifele has got the most five on five points in the league. Even strength. even strength. Who would he's be tied second? for first? Who would be tied? He's got forty nine even strength points. Who would be tied? With I don't him? know. I just it was a stat I saw yesterday. Oh, okay. Okay, Cam. Go. This question's for you. Oh wait, I'm surprised you didn't name a superstar. You're your twin. You got 500 Jamie, points. Jamie Ben. Jamie Ben had 500, 500 points. points. Yeah. Okay. Saku Koivu. Oh, Saku. Miko Koivu hit 600 points. Gino has hit 500 assists. Daniel Sedin hit 1,200 games played. There you go. Yeah. Sweet. Numbers. It was also a Hockey Day in Canada on Saturday and Hockey Day in America on Sunday. Okay. 
good celebration of hockey shows that hockey is as strong as ever. Yeah? At least. What are you leading to? Is that just a statement? That's just a statement. Okay. Next thing is for you. It's a question. It's a question for me. Go ahead. Let me have it. Oh! No, you go. I'll say it after. No, you say yours. Rakaguti scored a goal. I don't fucking care. It's beautiful. And kicked it in and they Shh. counted it because he's fucking awesome. Should the Flyers sell at the deadline? Yep. 100%. Definitely. Who? Who goes? Everyone on defense except Provorov and Ghost. Even Radko Gudis. Oh, shit. Yeah, sure. Trade him? So you're saying... But if they're going to trade him, they're getting the first. You're they're saying someone abandon, that abandon sack playoffs crap. this year, right? What's that? You're saying abandon playoffs this year? I'm saying I looked at the stats yesterday. Doesn't look promising. I'm okay if they toss it in for a great draft because it's a great draft every year. Yes. It's not a great draft. They're not saying it's a super deep draft Hex- this year. Hextall knows what he's doing at the draft table. Here's my thing. I, I uh, said about, about, the, the about the Flyers yeah. is there have been the same team for the last five years. Sneak into the playoff by the skin of their teeth, have a good series or two, and then they're out. Yeah. And they have no way, they, they just don't get further into the playoffs. And I don't know if that's, I, I just think they lack some talent. Mm-hmm. More or less on the back end of things, definitely. Uh, and that I think I just don't think they've got the goaltending depth yeah. there. They have to pick one of them, if either of them. But both of them are up. Newberth and Mason. They might have some of the best offensive depth in the league, and I don't get. And it's fun watching as a fan, or even just as a hockey fan in general, players who are in the peak of their career, and you're like, well, this is fun because even with the prospects coming up, they're not going to be ready for like three to four years top notch. Good. There goes the prime of Giroux and Voracek's career because they'll be like thirty-two and to thirty-four by that that's time. That's the con- That's awesome. the next thing. Yeah. Would you look at moving Giroux or Voracek? Those are big contracts to move. Yep. If I'm gonna, like right or, now, or, or like within you, the next two years, moving like right now. N- not maybe not right now, but in the future, if you're trying to change this team yeah. from yeah. being just yeah. uh okay, we're gonna get in the playoffs every year and maybe win a round or two because. At to, like, some make point, some waves and you want exactly. to win. Exactly. At yeah, some I'm point, okay you have that. to design your team and change your team into, we need to win. Like, I will have the same conversation in three to five years, let's say, if the if the Leafs make it, like, four years in a row, but they just squeak in and they don't really do any damage in the playoffs. Then I would say, maybe look at moving a couple guys to get add some depth somewhere where you don't have it. Yeah. Because well, I think that's a question that needs to be answered. Like, Minnesota's been one of those teams who get in the playoffs every year, but they don't do anything once they're there. So I think, this year's a telling, Louis, yeah. I think this year is a telling year for them. St. Louis is another team. Good. Stay that way. Uh, <laughs> Fantastic. The hatred runs deep. Ah. But they're a team that has just made the playoffs every year, but they never make it. Yeah. And then you have San Jose last year who just, they made the playoffs. St. Louis and then went they, to the conference final last year. I understand and that. But they made the playoffs and they made waves in the playoffs. Made it to the cup final and they had a chance to win the cup. It's the same with Nashville. Like, they... they and if you look at those, like, it's even with, I'll just use San, time to, San Jose. Some of the teams to I'll use San Jose as an example with, like, the mini retooling. The signing slash, did they? No, they made the trade for Martin Jones. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, something little, as little as, like, a signing and, yeah, like, a Yeah, because Martin Jones up. was a small, I know what you're saying. No, no, I'm just saying, like, that wasn't Team, a monster, like, that was, was a monster risk. acquisition. It was a risk. And it worked out, which is. And that's the difference with some teams. Like, Sergey Bobrovsky. That was a risk on Columbus's part, and it's worked out very well for them. Getting John Tortorella was a risk, and it's worked out for them. Okay, I'm going to tell you, Flyers aren't afraid of making risks. I'll just date back to how they got Eric Lindros, okay? So, this is, this is how they got Eric Lindros. Forsberg, didn't they? With what Philadelphia surrendered to get Eric Lindros from Quebec. It's big. Peter Forsberg, Ron Hextel, Mike Rizzi, Steve Duchesne, Kerry Hoffman, Distressing. Chris Simon, two first-round picks. Just Lindros. So no wonder Colorado was... Uh, one, oh, one used to acquire Patrick Waugh, who won Stanley Cups with Colorado in 96 and 01. One of the first-round picks was okay. used to acquire. My, who, is it, who are those first-round picks? Do you know? I do not. Who they turned out to be? I don't Because I'd be very interested to know. That'd be something neat. Well, one belongs to Montreal and one belongs to... Uh, Quebec. Quebec. So what you're saying Quebec. is the Flyers make great deals all the time. Well, but, no, they're they're not going to shy away from making a big deal but they need in to. hopes of making it. I'm not against, uh, I mean, I love Giroud and Voracek, obviously, but if you trade them in the next two years, you're probably going to get, like, max value. And by max value, I mean, like, probably two players who could step in your lineup, like a 
first or second round pick, maybe third, or maybe a couple of thirds, whatever. I think for Giroud, you'd probably like, be able to get something pretty good. No, no, I'm saying, like, I, I don't want to be like, oh, I'm going to get the kitchen sink and everything. But, like, the longer you wait, the less value you have, obviously. But also, you have to look at, they're, what definite, are you get in return? they're definitely holding contract. They're both making eight plus mil. Mm-hmm. Both. But, okay, here's, here's my. There was a move that was aggressive on. And I think this is what you're going to see with either Voracek, more or less likely with Giroux. But when Rick Nash went to the Rangers from the Blue Jackets, there was a lot of small pieces that had just, that went, that traded sides, right? Like, yeah. Anisimov went, uh, Dubinsky went, I, Broussard. Broussard went, who's now, but Broussard went from Columbus to New York, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, my bad, my bad. Yeah, so, and he was, I, I could see. He was pieces. in the St. Louis deal, actually, yeah. I think. Broussard? Yeah, I don't think he was in the Nash deal. Oh, there you go. Okay. Well, they made two Look trades up. in like a week. Yeah. Regardless, I, I I could see it was close. I yeah. could see like a multi. I don't think it'd be a one for one or a one for a lot of Correction. a lot of junk. The, the same no, it was a different yeah. year. It couldn't. Yeah, have. yeah. but it, was, it couldn't have been. Yeah, he came I can, from it's not yeah. going to be like so, like it'll be. We're probably not going to get for for example. I do not. I don't think he would go to the Leafs, mm-hmm. but it'd be like Giroux for Kadri. Gardner, no, Kadri, Gardner, Kadri, Nylander, say it with me, Kadri, Gardner, okay, and Kadri, Nylander, and and Komarov. I don't think Philly. I do think that. they'd take a pick before they take Komarov. But um, not to, I, pick I, I love Anki. But no, that that's that's the thing. They yeah, a yeah. Trade like that, obviously not those yeah. exact players, but uh, and then Flyers for good merit will be like, oh, you guys are too nice. Have Provorov. <laughs> Or here's no, but Sam to Ray. answer your question, yeah, I'm okay with that. I understand. I understand that the nature of the, it's a business. You want to win, and if you, if your investments aren't helping you, you fix those investments or you get rid of those investments yeah. to acquire or make like better yourself in general. So, what do we got for uh, Patrick's parade? Um, I was going to mention one last thing. Go ahead. The Vancouver Canucks unveiled a statue for Pat Quinn. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, Jim Benny didn't know either. He didn't know who Pat Quinn was. He had a tough time. Yeah, he was. <laughs> he's been hitting those like the buffet and like late. By the food. way, it's bad. I I like I was just on Twitter and I was looking. I think the score tweeted something and they had Jim Benning and they had his face. I'm like, that's what Jim Benning looks like. Yeah. I always just see him like. <sighs> he doesn't show his face whenever he comes on here, yeah. and it's just very like he's very mysterious. Oh yeah, and he's the, the type the, of guy that like yeah. his office. I've been in his office. His of office. You have. Like, only a third of his face is shown, and the rest is pure darkness. And the light beam, we don't know what's going on. Does he have from. one of those, like, basketball hoops you hang on the back of your door? Oh, yes. yeah, I know, because he's like, oh, come on! <laughs> it's he actually... It. He never gets it in. <laughs> Here's the ever. problem, though, is it's actually... <laughs> He he's thinks got, like, it's a basketball hoop, but it's a dartboard. Yeah, and he doesn't know why it never goes. He's in. got like he's got like forty <laughs> poof balls too, and he just he's ripping them at the dartboard. Yeah. He, Jimmy, hey! Like, <laughs> the best thing is, is and that's weird is he's got a picture of himself on the dartboard. Yeah. We don't get it. <laughs> how did that get there? <laughs> Jim Benning's the only like one of the few people that never got the the exception to like vowels. It's like a e y or e a e i o u, and sometimes yeah. y. No, it's always y for Jim Benning because you can't have too many vowels. So if you y in your name, it's an X name. Yeah. So like even Pat Quinn, he's like, can we take the Q I out of his name? Q I. Just we could do do U N N. That's fine. Just Q and I. That's a lot of letters. Talking about five letters for a statue. That's a big deal, guys. <laughs> we got to, have you guys have you Dan, I, have you been to Vancouver or yes. like outside the arena? Yes, I've been to the arena. But okay, I've been well, have you seen the statue of that one guy holding like the the white towel? Yes, that. Why is that a statue? Because that's <laughs> terrible. That's like the lowest Why point not? in your in your franchise history. Like, stop playing. Why even the white towel? And you immortalized it. Did I didn't know that was a statue till I went there, and I'm like, oh, what? Why is this a t- statue? Yeah, they're immortalized. They're gonna eventually immortalize Jim Benning as the best GM ever for the team. Actually, that's the next one. They're announcing it like next month because Jim spearheading his own. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we're, I I passed an executive order as GM. Yeah, it's gonna say Jim, and then the nickname <laughs> the Jimmy Benny <laughs> Benning. Here's, he calls himself the Jimmy Benny. Jim, you put more letters in than you have any jersey. Well, uh, it's my own name. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Love to talk to him sometime. He's a swell character. Oh, of course. Vancouver Canucks in 26th. Carolina pa- Panthers? Carolina Hurricanes. Hell yeah. Carolina <laughs> Panthers. Woo! 
Carolina Hurricanes in 27th, except they've played five less games. Hey, how come Steph Curry doesn't wear a Carolina Hurricanes jersey ever? Hmm? You think if they make the playoffs, they're going to have them as like a, oh, damn, they do playoffs at the same time. What? Because Steph Curry's from Carolina. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, because yeah, his, his dad, acknowledge his the dad, his dad, Dell played. I know, that's garbage. Dallas, is it 56 points there? They're in third last. Not impressed with that. Then Arizona and Colorado wound out our bottom five for Patrick. You only named four teams. Vancouver, Carolina, oh, Dallas, whoops. Arizona, Colorado. Yeah, you guys know numbers on my strong seat, so that's yeah, perfect. You're great at math. <laughs> Terrible. Cam's also really good for once a year. He'll put his uh, helmet on before he puts his jersey on in hockey. Yeah. Did it last or, night? He'll put, or he'll put his skates on before his pants. I, I do that all the time because my belly <laughs> pours over that I can't. Quick question. Quick, okay. Or update. Okay. How many goals does Andrew Ladd have, Ladd have this year? 16, I think. Yeah. What? He's getting yeah. there. Jesus. Yeah, he's, he had a January. He, 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 went on no, he played Winnipeg. Ha- he played Winnipeg is what happened. Yeah. And then he sparked him. How many assists does he have? Five. Yeah, I think so. Damn it, I was going to say three. I don't actually know. I just guessed five. S- 16 goals and five assists for six million bucks is not very good. That's a hell of a deal, man. That's, man, That's you know who loves we could have had that. that deal? Jimmy Benny. The Jimmy Benny. He yeah. wants that. It's the Benny. One vowel? Well, what's a steal? Oh, that is a steal. Double letter Double too. D's. Wait, are there players His in favorite. the league who don't have any vowels in their name? That's Martin awesome. Frick. Oh my God. Schuster. That no, you. you. Oh yeah. He has sixteen goals, six points for twenty-two, or six goals, oh, six assists <laughs> for twenty-two points. Six points. Sixteen goals, six His assists. His goals count as half. That's awesome. Yeah. They, uh, they're an interesting team. I, I don't know what their plan is moving forward. No, they have no. such a good defensive core, too. It makes no sense. Wojciech, <sighs> Hamnick, Hickey, Letty, Seidenberg, Calvin Dawn. Wait. Hey. Gonna be good. Hey, maybe, maybe Winnipeg could go knock on their door and be like, we give you Tobias Enstrom, we get Calvin Tobias. Dawn. <laughs> we get, we get Tobias. Calvin Dawn. Tobias. And like, they get who, sorry? Calvin Dawn. Calvin Dawn? Yeah. Thomas Hickey? Fuck. Maybe one of those guys is going to Vegas, though. Michael Dot Cole? Uh, probably, well, in theory, I think the Islanders are probably going to lose one of those defensemen. Like, Hamannick, Boychuk, and Letty are probably going to all be protected. That's their three, then, right? Yeah, and then, so the Hickey or DeHaan's gone, and I... I would I'm say Vegas, DeHaan's gone. I, yeah, if I'm Vegas, I'm picking DeHaan. I've played that, like, the, the cap-friendly game. I mm-hmm. take DeHaan, DeHaan and Fowler every time, but allegedly Fowler, they're going to, like... He's not on the trade block or anything. No. It's having a good year. They might actually try to move, um... Like one of the one of their four. They have to hold on. Here's okay. Well, gotta wrap it up anyways. But yeah. when we when I went and saw the Ducks live like this year, yeah. Vatanen was in the warmups, and I'm like, I'm counting. I'm like, they have seven D on the ice, so one of them's getting scratched. He was hurt, but he he skated in warm up, right? But they do that sometimes. See if they're seeing, oh okay. See, if see I thought they just okay. That's no, why no. they skated this seven no D because they'll under- skate seven if in what if. Oh, okay. If he's good to go, well, he plays. Okay. If he's not, then the guy, the other guy's warmed up. Oh, because I thought they were benching him, and I'm like, oh, well, no. clearly. I mean, that's the guy they're not protecting. Yeah, obviously, I didn't know that. Um, I could see something aggressive happening, like somebody going after one of those top three D. Maybe not Fowler, but Shea Theodore might be in play. Or the uh, Brandon Montour, or Josh or, Manson. Like, yeah, like they, these guys. Where are they coming from? They maybe so they many defense. The, the, the what about Puglia? And what about Puglia? Or Puglia. Yeah, Derek in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Did, yeah. Or who is the? They got a defenseman from oh, Detroit. Oh, Depre- Depre- He's hurt right now. Oh, okay. That's what I was. But look at that. If a guy's on IR, summer. like over the like, if a guy has like a long term injury over the summer, is he eligible for the expansion draft? That's what I haven't been able to figure out. Or yet. is he exempt because he's hurt? I think you have to approach him and ask him. At that point. So might. So if might, they want to protect him, they like he counts as a guy. Yeah. So it might be. Yeah, I guess maybe. I don't so know. if Myers is th- doesn't play all year, the Jets sell to protect him. There's got to be a way around that. Because if 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 you get injured and you're automatically protected, you're gonna think that a few guys are gonna. But be like long term, allegedly hurt. Like like oh, if you're on, like, yeah. like like Myers hasn't played in four months. And then yeah, and now we thought he's come back. So what if he doesn't play at all again. this year? Does that count as a long term IR or no? I don't. Know. Greg, you got anything? Uh, I'm looking, trying to find it right now, and. Pretty much everything I'm reading does not say anything about injuries. I just don't think injuries co- come Doesn't into matter. it. Doesn't matter? Yeah. So they'd have to... So Teams keep... will be required to protect, protect any contracted players with no move clauses with one of the team's slots for their protected players unless the contract expires on July 1st, 2017, in which case the no move clause would be considered void for the draft. Players with no move clause have limited no trade clauses must still be protected. Any players with no move clauses would be able to waive the clause and become eligible for the draft. 
So, like, if, if Winnipeg was like, hey, Toby, do you mind waiving this? And you might go to... Chances are you're probably not going to get picked. But we're just doing it so we can protect another player. So they can ask him to waive it. Yeah. Not trade him, but just ask him to waive, waive it. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I knew that already. But yeah. I know the injury is still up in the end. The injury, I don't know. Him. I think they need to clear that up. But I think it's just... I think it's based on contract. Yeah. So, which then... But... It's confusing. It is confusing because then you have guys like Nathan Horton and I can't wait till the Vegas Knights make their first trade next week. They're gonna they're gonna acquire Pavel Datsuk's contract from Arizona so they can hit the cat floor. You know what's BS? Or Chris Pronger's gonna get traded again. NHL or Hey. Uh what's his face? Savard's gonna get traded again. I have a bone to pick. NHL seventeen. The Coyotes are mighty good because all those contracts they picked up in yeah. the video game, they're on the goddamn team. That's why you have to... Make trades. Yeah. No, that's why you have to set it, restart your franchise I'm just and set it to current rosters. They have I'm Dats- doing that. I'm starting a new franchise, Able. NHL 17. Did you make with, yourself 99 no. and put you on yourself 17? No. I'm, I'm making Colorado. I, no, I'm working with Colorado. I'm going to make their team really good. Okay, we're starting day one. This is Greg's update. All right. Colorado update. What, what's your I answer? haven't I haven't moved anyone yet, but the plan is to strengthen up the decor. I'm gonna get rid of Tyson Berry and Eric Johnson. Who are you going for? Because they have high trade value. Like Eric Johnson, I don't think has as much trade value in the actual NHL as he does in the game. So I'm probably gonna target a couple younger defensemen. Look at the look at the Dehan Hickey situation. Get the young defenseman. Uh, but here's the thing. Might look at. Uh, might look at getting Nikita. Uh, no, not Nikita Nesterov. Uh, the other guy. Nikita Zadorov. No, he's he already plays. He's on the, my team already. The other guy that's on Montreal. Mestikov. No. Nesterov. Markov. No. M-O-N. Defenseman. The good M-O-N. defenseman. The young defenseman. Weber. Played for the Sea Dogs. Nathan Boyer. Nathan that's another guy I'll target. My team is. Dan gonna be, literally went through their whole D, and I named my one guy. <laughs> my team is going to be. <laughs> my team's going to be all young defensemen. Probably pick up okay, Josh Morrissey. Call this, what's smaller than an avalanche? A blizzard. No. Yep, Blizzard update. Blizzard. Blizzard update. Call on a Blizzard. Yep. We're going to have Greg's Blizzard update. Perfect. You know how Jerry can when you buy a Blizzard and they take it and turn it down, nothing falls out? Yeah. With the Avalanche, you turn it upside down, everything falls out. I uh, know, actually, with the Avalanche, you know when, like, magic is like, you just go to put stuff in a cup and it keeps flying away, it goes anywhere but the cup? Yep. That's a Colorado <laughs> Avalanche season. They're like, just throw the cup and they're throwing it, it's going all over the floor. Can't do it. Yeah, the, the plan is, is by this time next week when we do come back for the show. I'll yeah, have the champion. entire not cup champions. I'll have a very good blueprint. for You probably have more wins success. than they do. Well, yeah, because I'm playing on. Dude, I'm not <laughs> losing a game. No, like Miko Rantanen is on my first line with Matt Duchesne. That's what's happening. And then Gabriel Landeskog is going to play with Nathan McKinnon. And then, okay. then my fourth line. Don't have tease a fig- blizzard no, update. No, but my fourth line. I've already figured it out. I'm going to get. I'm going to get rid of Carl Soderberg, and I'm going to have uh, Mick, uh, Gregor Anko along with Joel Colburn. And then get a new third line center. Don't know who yet. Okay. But I'm working on it. <laughs> I, just to give motion. It's a work in progress. Greg just moved his head a bunch when yeah. he went silent. <laughs> He's like, I'm just going to shake his wants- head. <laughs> <laughs> Sam ben- No. Sammy Benzman. No, I can't. As long as there's no champ test. We're going to get Bo Horvat. I can't. Sure. I'm going to go after Bo Horvat. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. That's Tell me how it is. I will. Tell me how it goes. Yeah. All I have, right. I have trades up to heart, too. Send us home. Thank you for listening to the Last Man in Podcast episode number 133. If you want to get in touch with the show, check us out on Twitter at Last Man in PC. If you want to email the show, lastmaninpodcast at gmail.com, just rifle off an email to us. We'll read it on the show. Rifle it off. Eh? Yeah, rifle it off. What if they want a pistol? Eh? Well, then that's fine, too. Perfect. Just rifles get the shotgun? job done. What if I shotgun it? Mm, too messy. If you want to shotgun us no, an email, shotgun, shotgun's not no. accurate enough. Exactly. No, shotgun. The right write a third range. of the sentence and then write the end of the sentence and then the middle. Tarantino us. No. With Please a shotgun, kidding. it's just like hitting your head against the keyboard. That's what a shotgun is. Rifling <laughs> off is like. <laughs> Please. So, so, <laughs> shotgun us an email. So oh my God, that'd be great. So basically, what Jim Benning does every trade, <laughs> exactly. every trade deadline. Smash. <laughs> 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 Oh, too many valves! Too many valves! <laughs> he actually has removed the valve keys from his keyboard. Hold, <laughs> 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 What? <laughs> Somebody goes to trades. And the the d- how did he even do that? The d- g- goes. F- the <laughs> dog goes. Hold on, we're just saying dog- jets would be. <laughs> 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 Ha <laughs> ha
<laughs> Wait, and if you see Winnipeg Jets hockey club, it'd be. <laughs> 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 like the thing is, is he actually just refers to himself as JB. That's how we refer to just to avoid the vowels. <laughs> hey Jim. Hey, it's JB. <laughs> he couldn't say hey. Yeah, he couldn't say hi. No, he can't, he can't say, say hi. hello. Head nods. Yeah. Head nods furiously. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, if you want to rifle us an email. Because rifles are more precise than shotguns. Yeah, please. They may, it's a lot less messy. You also get more ammo with a rifle. That's yeah, true. There you go. Yeah, you can go longer. Yeah. Uh, last Man in Podcast at gmail.com is where you do that. You can also check us out on YouTube, Last Man in Podcast. Or if you listen on YouTube and you want to check us out and on the go, you can take us anywhere with you in your pocket with some headphones on through the iTunes app, iTunes, or uh, podcast app, as well as anywhere on Google Play that you get your podcasts. I have Google Play on my Samsung S6 and... Uh, I have it on a podcast app, so it works. It does work. If you have it a works. smartphone, you can find us on a podcast app. Other than that, uh, see you next week. Go Leafs tomorrow. Bye. Go Leafs. Go.